Hello everyone, this is Current Topics in MLS lecture number 12, Interprofessional Practice and Communication Skills. In this lecture, we're going to discuss what interprofessional practice is and how it is affected by communication skills. We are also going to talk about different factors that it can affect how we communicate with one another and how all of this ties into healthcare. So our objectives for this lecture, um, number one, define and explain the goal of interprofessional practice. Number two, define communication and differentiate between the three main ways to communicate. Number three, list the four styles of communication and describe the potential impact of each style. Number four, define diversity and explain why it is important to have a diverse healthcare workforce. And number five, discuss how personality differences can cause conflict in the workplace and list strategies to resolve those conflicts. So interprofessional practice. This concept really encompasses several other concepts such as interprofessional education, interprofessional collaborative practice, interprofessional teamwork, and interprofessional team-based care. You all have had some exposure to the interprofessional education, but what about the rest of these? Okay, you guys know I love to define things, so let's talk definitions for just a minute. As you may know from your IPE course, interprofessional education refers to students from two or more professional programs uh, learning about, from, and with each other. Interprofessional collaborative practice is when multiple healthcare workers from different professions work together with patients, families, caregivers, and communities to deliver quality care. Interprofessional teamwork refers to the levels of cooperation and coordination characterizing relationships between professions in delivering care. And interprofessional team-based care is care delivered by small work groups who are recognized by others as having a collective identity and a shared responsibility for a patient or a group of patients. So for example, um, if the hospital that you work in has a rapid response team, that would be a good example of an interprofessional team-based um, care team. So even though there are differences in these terms, for the purposes of this lecture, I will refer to interprofessional practice, uh, which will encompass all of these terms. So it's important to know that the overall goal of interprofessional practice in healthcare is improved quality of healthcare delivery and patient safety. And it's also important to remember that the lab plays a critical role on the interprofessional team. Interprofessional practice integrates professional competencies and interprofessional competencies. Professional competencies are those that allow you to demonstrate you are proficient and capable of performing your job. Interprofessional competencies, however, are those that evaluate how well you can use your professional skills and knowledge to work with other healthcare professions, patients, families, and communities. Most of you working in the field will be familiar with um, what professional competencies are. So let's talk about interprofessional competencies a little bit more. There are four core competencies for interprofessional practice. These main competencies are derived from the four competency domains, which are values and ethics, roles and responsibilities, interprofessional communication, and teams and teamwork. So number one, work with individuals of other professions to maintain a climate of mutual respect and shared values. This falls in the values and ethics domain. A domain two, roles and responsibilities, includes competency two, which is use the knowledge of one's own role and those of other professions to assess and address healthcare needs of patients and to promote and advance the health populations. Number three, interprofessional communication. And the competency is to communicate with patients, 
families, communities, and other health professionals in a responsible manner that promotes teamwork. And number four, apply relationship building values and the principles of team dynamics to perform effectively and to plan, deliver, and evaluate patient and population-centered care. And this falls under the teams and teamwork domains. And there is a link in this lecture folder um, where I'm going to post um, a file that goes into a little bit more detail about the general competencies and the subcompetencies that are associated with each. Um, so if you're interested in learning more, I encourage you guys to look over that document. Okay, switching up a little, um, we're going to talk about communication and communication skills. Now, communication is defined as the transmission of an idea, instruction, opinion, or emotion from one person to another. Generally, there is a response or other feedback in return. So communication, and especially effective communication, is key in any workplace or team setting. When we talk about communication skills, what does that mean exactly? Well, communication skills includes things like listening to others, being friendly, staying open-minded, asking questions, understanding and sharing information, giving feedback, clearly explaining thoughts and ideas, and so on. And I think we can all agree that there's really an art to mastering communication skills. But beyond communication skills, there are also different ways to communicate as well as different styles of communication. So the three main ways to communicate are verbal, nonverbal, and written. Verbal communication is simply spoken communication, but it can involve nuances such as tone of voice, enunciation, or inflection. Nonverbal communication is communication through body language, facial expressions, touch, sight, hand gestures, and so on. And written communication is communication through written, written words, such as typed or handwritten text. And while this could be considered a nonverbal communication, it is really its own category. And it includes things like text messages, emails, notes, letters, etc. The four styles of communication are different than the three ways of communicating. These refer more to how you communicate what you want to say. The four styles are passive communication, aggressive, passive aggressive, and assertive communication. And here on this slide, you'll see some sort of example phrases from um, each of these styles of communication. But let's talk a little bit more about those. So we're going to talk about these in a little bit more detail and discuss the impact each style has on effective communication. So passive communicators often defer to others for decision making and ignore their own personal needs. They will also allow others to ignore their personal needs. This style of communication may be safer in the event a conflict escalates, but the lack of communication to others can lead to misunderstandings or result in buildup of anger or resentment. Aggressive communicators are often defensive or hostile when confronted by others. And they frequently alienate, alienate or offend others. This style of communication comes across as demanding or rude, but it can help expedite getting needs met. So we all have that coworker, right, that's an aggressive communicator, and while they can sometimes be a little bit overbearing. They often get things done pretty quickly. Passive aggressive communicators tend to exert control over others. Um, often they'll use sarcasm and indirect communication, like maybe they'll mutter to themselves or give someone the silent treatment, spread rumors, that kind of thing. They will often appear passive on the surface, but they subtly act out their anger. These types of communicators have limited consideration for others. They appear to be cooperative, but may silently be doing the opposite. An assertive communication style is one with direct, honest communication. Communicators that use this style um, respect the feelings of others, but are also able to assert their own feelings. 
While they are direct and honest, these communicators might not be the most effective with this explosive individual. So they might not be the best when communicating with maybe an upset, aggressive communicator. However, out of all the communication styles, this one is thought to be the most effective style of communication. So now that we've talked about communication skills, ways to communicate, and styles of communication, what does all that have to do with interprofessional practice? Well, remember, we talked about the domains, and interprofessional practice has a whole domain dedicated to interprofessional communication. Um, so that means that it's pretty important to interprofessional practice. So interprofessional communication is simply communication between two or more professions. Now, successful communication between professions requires a mutual respect for each other. Done well, this can result in building trust and understanding between team members. Now, just like this illustration says, how can they work together if they don't learn together? So interprofessional practice really should start in school, which is what UAMS is working on and um, lots of other universities um, across the U.S. are doing. So side note here in the illustration, there's a lab sciences building, and I didn't even have to Photoshop that one in. So somebody gets it that lab sciences is an important member of that team. So yay. So now we're going to talk about diversity in healthcare for a minute. Diversity is the condition of having or being composed of differing elements, especially the inclusion of different types of people such as people of different races or different cultures, in a group or organization. So the key word here is inclusion. Diversity is more than just acknowledging and tolerating differences. There must be respect and acceptance as well as inclusion. So diversity is important in healthcare for many reasons. Diversity in healthcare workers can help better serve a diverse patient population. And our patient population is only getting more and more diverse. So it can also contribute to better productivity. It can discourage assumptions and prejudice, and it helps address healthcare disparities. In addition, if we look to hire a more diverse staff, this can also increase the talent pool. So tying this in with interprofessional practice, Often, your interprofessional teams are going to be made up of diverse team members, and they should be made up of diverse team members, but it's important to recognize the diversity among the team um, and make sure that everyone is included. Moving on to personality differences and conflict in the workplace. So there are lots of theories about personality types, and that can include Myers and Briggs 16 personality types, Holland's six personality types, the big five personality traits, and so on and so on. And these theories really make for interesting reading. So if you guys are interested in learning more about the different personality types, I encourage you um, to look into some of those different readings. Anyway, so with different types of personalities, there is bound to be conflict. So some forms of personality conflicts can include work style differences, background differences, attitude differences, and competitive versus cooperative differences. So if you think about this, you have coworkers around you that work differently than you do, and that sometimes can cause a little bit of conflict. It can also cause conflict um, when attitudes vary throughout the lab, right? So you have those that, are, that have a good attitude, they stay positive, and those that seem to never have a good attitude and they're always negative. Um, that creates some conflict there as well. So there are many more types of personality conflicts beyond just those that we've talked about. So it's important to know some strategies for dealing with these. So when conflicts happen, it is important to stay professional. You should accept that personality differences exist. Um, and if there is a conflict, find the source of the conflict and try to address that. Or if things aren't getting resolved, you can always talk to management. And again, interprofessional teams will be made up of members with various personality types. 
So it's very important to recognize not only the diversity among the team, but also the different personalities and how to deal with those. So in summary, um, effective interprofessional practice relies on effective communication skills. Your communication skills can be different depending on how an individual communicates. So the diversity of the group and personality differences among team members, all of those can contribute to how um, communication can be effective or not effective. When all of these things work well together, the outcome is better patient care, increased quality in healthcare services, and improved population health overall. So I know this lecture seems to jump around a little bit, but I, I hope that I got across that all of these things actually do tie into interprofessional practice and that communication is really key in um, interprofessional practice working well. So that brings us to the end of this lecture. Um, if you guys have any questions, you can always reach me in my office. Phone number is 501-296-1017, or I probably respond faster through email if I'm not in my office. You can email me at lkclark at uams.edu. And I hope that you guys um, are still enjoying the semester and that everything's going well for you guys.